Hey guys and welcome to a new Panda Film tutorial. This tutorial is going to be a part of a series of five tutorials covering how to retouch a model's face. Part one is going to involve removing blemishes using the various different tools available to you in Photoshop. So let's get into it. Now I like to zoom into fit screen so I can see the entire model's face and then just look at the face and see what sticks out at me blemish wise so I got a couple dark patches of spots up here some scars above her eyebrow around here I got some darker spots or freckles I got big freckles here and scars there I've got some hair on her lip and some hair over here on her cheekbones and I got a strand of hair up here as well and there's also a strand of hair just here on her chest so let's go to a forehead first so I can show you the first tool that I'm going to use. To access these different tools you can hold your mouse over the healing um, tool here and you can select them easily with the drop out or fly out menu. You can also cycle through them by holding shift and hitting J on your keyboard. This will cycle through all the tools in that menu in order. So I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool first. Now the spot healing brush tool can use content aware, create texture or proximity match. I prefer to use content aware as it is the best option to use. Basically what you do is you drag out the area you want to fix and Photoshop will look around the area and think what's best to go inside of the part you've just highlighted. You can just click drag over and fix small parts like so if there's any more on the forehead we've got some camera problems up here remove some of the hairs stray hairs up here the healing brush tool spot healing brush tool sorry isn't very good for large areas it gets confused quite easily so if I increase my brush size and go across the entire forehead which in an ideal world you won't have to do give it a second or two to create the textures using the content aware fill I'll just let us do this so you can see <laughs> so you can see here that using the large brush going over the entire forehead has somehow picked up a lip from the bottom of the picture and also introduce some of the dark areas around here as well as the eyebrow from here and some over here now this isn't what we want so we're just gonna undo this like so and then zoom in to see if there's any more so yeah I would stick to using a small brush for spot healing brush tools as it is the best way to go. I'll just fix this bit of a stray eyebrow right here. Whoops, don't want to do that. Okay. It is a very time consuming job um, when you start getting really picky, which is why I'm having quite a difficult time trying to stay focused here. The next tool I'm going to show you is the healing brush tool. It is very similar to the spot healing brush tool although this requires you to select a source point so I'm going to show you an example of this now let's just go down here so we have this strand of curly hair let's zoom in I'm going to uh, hold alt down and select some skin tone that looks similar and just go over the piece of hair like so oops didn't want to do that now as you can see you have a little crosshair off to the side where you sampled it which shows that it's being sampled from that point so you know exactly where you're sampling from and just carry on doing this resampling in different areas as you go to make sure you have a nice even skin tone rather than all blotchy we have this crease here so I'm going to select here and just pull down so the source point will also follow and create a good representation of what it should be. Let's just get rid of some problematic areas here, like so. Now if you're careful, this 
can also work with a big brush tool also. I got some problem area over here, so I'm going to grab my brush tool, go over it, select source points as I go, like so. Let's just go down the face here, up to here, over there, get rid of some of the hair. Now, this is really good if you have dark areas of the face where you want to fix because it will recognize the change in light and it will replace problem area with similar shaded areas also. For example under the chin, let's just go a bit darker and again, whoops, it's a bit light for that. Right, so that's that done. Now we'll just go in and zoom into this hair here which has been bugging me for ages. And I'm going to use the patch tool for this one. So we're going to choose the patch tool. Now what the patch tool allows you to do, it allows you to draw a lasso around what you want to replace and then lets you find a similar texture whilst also giving you a preview of what it will look like. Which is really handy for the really minute things you're trying to change. So let's just have another look at this picture. So most of the really obvious parts are fixed. I'm going to zoom into this bit here now. And use the patch tool. Make a really nice selection of that. And just drag over like so. So you can see how easy that was to just find an area similar to that and replace it. It's the easiest tool I use. And I use it more than any other tool available for this sort of thing on Photoshop. So you can see there, you would have not known that anything was there. We fixed a lot of the blemishes on the face, which means it is now ready for some more steps, which you'll find in part two. I'm just going to carry on and fix some of the minute details here, like so. Then we have some eyelash issues up here. I'm just going to zoom in, choose the healing brush tool have a smaller brush, source that point, whoops, and get rid of the eyelash here completely. And then what I'll do is I'll go to replace, a slightly bigger brush, choose a source here, and just follow the eyelash like so, whoops. So there we go. We have created more eyelashes as well. Oh, we nearly forgot about this piece down here. Patch tool. Quickly circle it. Find a similar piece of skin, like so. And there you go. We have now successfully, using three different tools, removed most of the really obvious blemishes on her face. So join me in part two, where I'll show you how to enhance, sharpen, and color the eyes. So I shall see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.